today we are having the first session after some time and it is starting with oral submucous fibrosis and a very interesting and new research as far as oral submucous fibrosis goes now we always think about this how do we manage oral submucous fibrosis it's uh, the management is difficult there's a lot that has happened but sometimes we can also wonder uh, what all the new changes all the new advances can they be used to treat this disease and also it's good very good that we have with us someone who is doing very active research on this dr supriya keur is with us from uh, pune and uh, she is a professor in oral pathology at dy patil so what i was uh, i wanted you to tell us is how come you chose a research that is uh, more in the treatment of oral submucous fibrosis rather than the typically popular you know potentially malignant uh, part of the whole disease uh, actually all my exposure started from my post graduation uh, so i did my post graduation in 2003 from uh, government dental college and hospital nagpur my guide and mentor dr vinay hazari sir was the driving force not only behind me behind all of us he himself was very active in oral pre cancer and cancer preven- prevention and even tobacco cessation so we used to see lot of oral submucous fibrosis cases and we have a lot of documentation of all the data as well and the cases were even seen in younger and younger individuals then uh, i joined dr deva patel dental college and hospital as a lecturer and then in 2018 we started our very own regenerative medicine lab so we have a very active team under the guidance of dr uh, ramesh bonde sir wherein we started looking at the mesenchymal stem cells from the oral cavity and then as we took smaller steps and progressed further and we got gmp certification and we started doing in vitro analysis we realized that uh, mesenchymal stem cells and its secretome has already been done a lot of work in liver fibrosis and in pulmonary fibrosis so that is what set me thinking that instead of trying to reduce the malignant transformation we should be working on that as well but we could treat uh, the oral fibrosis using mesenchymal stem cells and exosomes we already have a lot of research done in liver and pulmonary fibrosis and now with exosomes no we are actually treating cardiomyopathies also in many centers across the world so this is what this was our first step and then uh, we got the icmr grant we got a lot of support from our college uh, our management and then we started doing smaller in vitro tests we did cell line analysis we did scaffold analysis then we developed an animal model and this is how we started uh, working on oral submucous fibrosis so the main aim is to reduce fibrosis thereby reduce morbidity to the patient so that probably the malignant transformation rate will also reduce in coming days too so we are trying to develop a, a treatment modality using mesenchymal stem cell secretome for the treatment of oral submucous fibrosis we have taken baby steps but i thought this would be a good platform to share our research with everyone so i'm sure newer ideas or newer avenues in this would enrich the research as well as the results yes it's very very interesting indeed and the lecture promises also to be very interesting uh dr supriya has kindly recorded the lecture so we don't meet up with any problems in that uh we'll watch the lecture together and then we'll come back for the discussion Good evening everyone. Today at the Oral Pathology Tuesday platform, I Dr. Supriya Khair would like to share our research laboratory results with all of you. We at Regenerative Medicine Laboratory are working with adult non-embryonic stem cells derived from oral sources. Depending on our laboratory findings, animal experiments and ongoing trials, we would like to take this small step of hypothesizing and suggesting about harnessing the potential of mesenchymal stem cell secretome in the treatment of oral submucous fibrosis oral submucous fibrosis is described as a chronic debilitating condition it affects the oral cavity along with pharynx upper digestive tract with reduction in mouth opening altered taste and speech 
reduce tongue motility and thereby altering the overall quality of life with very high malignant transformation rate recent reports have revealed alarming statistics of younger individuals being affected by this condition current therapies include the medical and surgical managements which are not being effectively covering all the aspects of this disease newer treatments are looking at administrating hyperbaric oxygen or using curcumin aloe vera tulsi and other herbal chelating agents this can be attributed due to limited trials and also the uh, the medical treatment cannot be validated due to the lack of effective in vivo models of oral submucous fibrosis so detailed research into the probable causes and etiopathogenesis of oral submucous fibrosis is going on since 1953 a lot of work has led to our understanding at molecular level for the effects of erica nut and the carcinogens ericoline ericidine alkaloids and polyphenols so we need to target the various pathways that could affect fibrosis epithelial dysplasias and subsequent malignant transformation to fulfill the first lacune we have in doing medical management or effective management of oral submucous fibrosis is we need to have a good osmf animal model so to do this to fill this lacune we tried first to develop an animal model so that an in vivo testing of this probable drug derived from stem cells can be done so in vitro analysis of erica nut extract has already set the results and hence a brief reverse research was done for animal models of oral submucous fibrosis we found that capsaicin was the first active substance which was used in animals to simulate oral submucous fibrosis but the results weren't very encouraging bleomycin induced model was used later for a really long time for animal studies both for oral submucous fibrosis and oral squamous cell carcinoma but there was a difference of opinion about the molecular effects and pathogenesis of bleomycin which is different definitely from erica nut another model utilized was betel uh, betel nut paste application which showed confirmatory condensed collagen deposition indicating oral submucous fibrosis after 6 months of the treatment then further a lot of other research were also done on erica nut extracts which were injected intramucosally or was given along with drinking water or a paste was applied at the inside portion of the buccal mucosa so we tried developing mice which are male swiss albino mice with both intrabuccal injection as well as uh, erica nut extract given into the drinking water for producing model for oral submucous fibrosis intraoral root uh, or intra oral root painting with erica nut extract was very difficult and we stuck to these two models so we took around 10 animals each and the study was terminated after 10 weeks and after 12 weeks and histopathological analysis did show development of fibrous bands in the connective tissue so as you can see in the histo uh, in the hematoxylin eosin staining which we had done for erica nut treated buccal tissues we are able to see the fibrosis that is happening just in the juxtra epithelial and the lamina propria region which is similar to the positive control of bleomycin we also perform mason trichome staining and we use j image analyzer to actually quantify the amount of uh, um, collagen fiber deposition that can be seen in the mason trichome staining as well as after the j image analyzer so we did produce two papers in peer reviewed index journals and put forth the hypothesis of using stem cell secretome in the treatment of oral submucous fibrosis so when i am talking about uh, mesenchymal stem cells and mesenchymal stem cell secretome i would just like to take few slides explaining the exact meaning of what we were hypothesizing to be the next novel drug for treatment of oral submucous fibrosis now mesenchymal stem cells are multipotent stem cells or stromal cells which are present in adults and birth associated tissue like placenta and umbilical cord Mesenchymal stem cells possess low immunogenicity as they lack MHC2 
and have low MHC1 expression, making it a very suitable candidate for allogenic transplantation. They have infinite self-renewal capacity and they have potential for differentiation. In simpler terms, stem cells are like donuts. Depending upon the preconditioning effect and the tissue tropism of the, target, of the target tissue and the organ, the dressing of the donor differs or the differentiation into different, different types of adult functional cells can occur. Primarily, the stem cells differentiate into osteoblasts, adipocytes and chondrocytes and they are present in various areas in our body. The stem cells growing in the tissue culture flask or basically in vitro release many paracrine factors into the tissue culture media. Now, they, these are known as secretome. Depending upon the release factor, upon the size of the release factors, you have various uh, names that are given like exosomes, microvesicles or large extravesicular vesicles are also known as EVs. They also secrete a lot of cytokines, chemokines, growth factors, lipid and protein. So when we take this secretome into action, that is either the soluble proteins or the extracellular vesicles or the whole secretome is taken, we are basically giving a cell-free therapy. So in this case, we are not using the cells at all. We are just using the paracrine factors that are released by the cells. So mesenchymal stem cells are capable of secreting a lot of immunomodulatory factors, proteins and growth factors. Interestingly, it also has anti-fibrosis properties. The wide range of clinical application of mesenchymal stem cells has been largely attributed to their potential for differentiation, immunomodulation, anti-inflammatory, apoptotic inhibition and tropism towards pathological or injured tissues. Mesenchymal stem cells also release save several extracellular matrix proteins, MMPs, growth factors that aid in remodeling of the matrix with increase in angiogenesis. So in 2022, Department of Biotechnology, DBT and DST had put forward the concept of harnessing the potential of application of stem cells in therapy of human diseases. So the stem cell therapy could be the new, new steroid, to put it very loosely. So it works in a lot of other conditions and diseases. I take just a few quick seconds to emphasize the overall use of stem cells and stem cell based products in the clinical trial for various diseases like neurological disorders, joint diseases, joint regeneration, pulmonary diseases, skin, muscle, liver, kidney degenerative disorders. So mesenchymal stem cells have been exploited extensively in liver fibrosis. So we are checking out three different kind of fibrosis that occur in our body, which could lead to fatal injuries as well as disease and death before we actually move on to oral submucous fibrosis. So they have been extensively used in a lot of clinical trials are in phase three for liver fibrosis. Five different method methodology have been used, including direct mesenchymal stem cells, which are injected into the liver or they are injected intravenously into the patient or the paracrine factors or secretome are used. Sometimes the cells are grown in a preconditioned media with either thermal shock, hypoxia or pharmacological modulators so as to get in the yield of growth factors or exosomes which are better than the ones of the stem cells which are grown in no normal conditions. Also, sometimes extravesicular vesicles as well as exosomes are also further fortified with different drugs for exact delivery to reduce liver fibrosis. MSCs when preconditioned, that is grown with spe within specific cell environment, can be delivered in cases of cardiomyopathy to reduce fibrosis and inflammation, basically by increasing angiogenesis, having immunomodulatory effect, and especially by not allowing conversion of a cardiac fibroblast to a myofibroblast. MSCs have also been extensively used in lung fibrosis. 
it has immunomodulatory effect in lung fibrosis and it sub by suppression of differentiation of fibroblasts into myofibroblasts is when we, we can have reduction in lung fibrosis, which is a progressively fatal disease. Here again, there is suppression of myofibroblasts, release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, suppression of pro-inflammatory cytokines, I'm sorry, and basically decreasing the expression of transforming growth factor beta and call one alpha one. So we are realizing Amongst the most important feature for increased fibrosis is disruption of function of the said organ is conversion of the fibroblast into myofibroblast, which alters the extracellular matrix and leads to deposition. We did a lot of uh, preliminary cell line based studies, developed the animal models, as well as validated the arachnid extract that can be given to the animals, and then started on this work on stem cell derived therapy for oral submucous fibrosis. ICMR funded our project around eight months back and then the secretome we have been using to cause reversal of fibrosis in cases of oral submucous fibrosis. Now it basically has antifibrotic activity. So when we take the healthy human tooth, we remove the pulp, we alter or remove a uh, cause a uh, differentiation of the cells into mesenchymal stem cells. Take this paracrine medium uh, release factor of the tissue medium, store it, extrapolate it by a hyperflask and then filter and enrich and take the desired bioactive components. And they have shown to have inhibition of TGF beta as well as TNF stimulated gene 6 which protein restores the balance between TGF beta 1 and TGF beta 3. Also, hepatocyte growth factor HGF secreted by MSCs are also shown to inhibit the transforming growth factor beta pathway. It also has immunomodulatory effect by basically increasing the interleukin 10. So the stem cells as well as the stem cell secretome reduces interferon gamma, reduces tumor necrosis factor alpha, as well as reduces the CXCR3 C-reactive protein and TNF alpha further by increasing, decreasing interleukin-6 and increasing interleukin-10 activity. We have antioxidative potential. Transplantation of mesenchymal stem cells upregulate NADPH quinone oxidoreductase 1, glutathione reductase, glutathione peroxidase, and heme oxygenase 1, which play a major role in scavenging free radicals. So a lot of tissue injury in oral submucous fibrosis is also because of production of reactive oxygen species. So MSCs upregulate nuclear factor erythroid derived 2 like 2 and superoxide dismutase which aid in mediating the reduction of oxidative stress. Plus it very importantly brings about angiogenesis. So we did a lot of analysis in our lab and we found that Detailed analysis of growth factors present in secretome, we see an increase in hepatocyte growth factor, PDGF, a platelet-derived growth factor, TGF-beta, VEGF, as well as angiopoietin-2 and fibroblast growth factor basic. We also performed the in vivo model, which was done on chick embryo. So, which was done for biomedical research, especially to evaluate the angiogenic potential of the drug. So zero hours the eggs are taken and we create a small opening at the blunt end by, of a sharp instrument and we observe the secondary and tertiary blood vessel formation and capture it and then analyze the data using JMA software for a blood vessel formation, blood vessel length, branching points. So incubation of the deck, candling it is done, removal of the albumin and this is how this in vivo model or uh, chorioallantoic membrane assay or CAM technique is used. And we found the number of blood vessels are much higher when we use dental pulps, uh, mesenchymal stem cell secretome as compared to the control and PBS.
So when we come to the epithelial to mesenchymal transition that is seen in OSMF, it is primarily because of transforming growth factor beta 1 and hypoxia induced factor HIF, which mediate this EMT transition, contributing to development of oral submucous fibrosis and further malignant transformation. In liver fibrosis, MSE-derived exosomes significantly reduce EMT-associated n cadherin and Vimentin-positive cells. Also, MSC possesses microRNA 3P and MIR294, which present, prevent EMT through drown regulation of TGF beta in diabetic model. Vesicles containing microRNA potent against are also potent against renal fibrosis. So we are expecting similar positive results from our experiments. Clinically, we have been able to show reversal of um, fibrosis, but our experiments are still progressing. So moving forward, we had a few obstacles when we started using stem cell secretome as the uh, therapeutic or the drug. So the donor associated variations were there, age or the health status. So what we did, we did batch culture and pooling. So there was uniformity in the mesenchymal stem cell condition media or secretome as well as extra vesicular vesicle composition. Then we had a lot of issues about which source of MSC should be taken, which will reverse the fibrosis to the maximum. So in vitro screening of best source and its potential was done. And we found that dental pulp mesenchymal stem cells are very good, followed by shed, though umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells also show reversal of fibrosis in a lot many cases. Then there was intrinsic variation in therapeutic uh, potential. So we did preconditioning of the mesenchymal stem cells so that their therapeutic potential as well as survival rates were uniform. As well as to improve the shelf life, we did lyophilization. So conditioned media like this was lyophilized into a form of powder, like how we have PRP powders available. And then they can be diluted with PBS or with any other solvent so which increases their shelf life and also accentuates the potency. So it takes a really long time to get new drugs approved. And apart from SARS-CoV-2 vaccine, maybe nothing else pharmaceutically has come out so fast in the market because there is a process for drug development. There is preclinical research required, clinical research, then government reviews as well as the regulatory body approval and then post-market safety monitoring is very, very important before you actually a drug comes out in the market. So we are right now at the stage of preclinical research. We have finished it and we are able to show reversal of fibrosis as increasing the mouth opening in our animal model and we are going forward taking the third step of clinical research. This is our regenerative medicine laboratory. This is GMP certified at Dr. D.Y. Patil Dental College in Hospital Pune. And this is what we have been doing uh, since past four years since the inception of the and since past one year directly into oral submucous fibrosis. And this is my team. Thank you so much for a patient listening. Thank you, Dr. Supriya. That was indeed a very interesting lecture. So um, while I think we have so far not got any questions, um, can you... I have to ask everybody, please put in your thoughts and your questions in the chat so we can share them here. Now, let me see if there are anything. Dr. Bagishri, yeah, if the slides are not clear, uh, basically YouTube shows you everything at around 470 uh, resolution, but you need to go up much more than that to get the slides that were, which are legible, very clear to read. So if you can take it to the higher level of resolution on your phone or wherever you're watching, you will be able to see the slides very clearly. Okay, and then we have something from Hazare, sir. Yes, let me hide. Oh. Okay, so what we have, Dr. Hazare is saying, reversal of fibrosis, 
combo effects of antifibrotic property and neoangiogenesis as demonstrated in MSC derived from human dental pulp. So I think sir is just commenting on it. Anything you want to add at any point, please go ahead. <laughs> Actually, there was a question whether the entire secretome was harnessed and was there any chances of infection in the secretome or when the stem cells are injected into the animal model. What I wanted to say was there are chances of their infections in the carriage process, but we did not use stem cells at all. We were emphasizing on cell-free therapy. So we do not have other immunological parameters also to take care of. So what was done was only the secretome, which were paracrine factors, a cocktail of growth factors and the cytokines, chemokines, as well as other proteins that were taken and they were lyophilized. So when we lyophilize it, we amplify the product and plus it is more easy to transfer. So the chances of infection passage is next to nil. Plus the entire secretome could be harnessed. Now, th this was a problem with us also when we were taking initially few cases. You know, there are some cases where the secretome composition could be different. And in the other, uh, uh, other sources, the secretome uh, configuration could be different. So what we did is we extrapolated it by hyperflask so that we get consistency in the secretome, uh, uh, the constituents of secretome so that we know exactly how much of growth factors, chemokines, cytokines are being injected when we go to apply it in the diseased organ or tissue. Yes, I think you may want to answer that previous question also. I'll just bring it up. So Dr. Avinash had asked, how different is bleomycin-induced OSF model to that of ANA-induced? What are the factors which induce OSF in mice? So bleomycin models have been used for OSMF as well as for OSCC since a decade. The only issue there is we do get uh, collagen fiber deposition, but the process of deposition is slightly different. It is more about repair and you also get epithelial changes which are seen after six months of the treatment. The ANE induced model gives you faster results. Like we got results in 12 weeks and plus it was emphasizing more on just having collagen fiber uh, deposition. We did not get too many epithelial changes. So that is how I think that a &E model is better because in the humans, it is the a &E which is causing fibrosis, not bleomycin. Plus bleomycin models are can be only the contact models or where it is injected. Whereas when we used a &E with water droplet, it was going throughout the mouth. So some amount of field cancerization could be studied later on because when you are doing OSMF, it is not a pinpoint area. It is generalized throughout the mouth. So I, I think any induced models, animal models are much better, more predictable and more uh, closer to the, and, uh, the human models. Yes, very good. All right. Dr. Osmani is asking how many applications for obtaining results. I think he meant how many times you had to try the whole thing before you got the results. Uh, so uh, once we got the animal models, then we had taken different concentrations of the secretome. Plus some of the secretomes were from the preconditioned stem cells and some of the secretome was obtained from normal obtaining. So the designing of the study was done to get the optimal concentration. But we had to inject like for a month before we started getting few. So we had time intervals for clinical uh, as well as for sacrificing the animals after injecting the uh, secretomes into the uh, into the animals. So right now we have finished doing one month of administration and we are already getting the clinical opening of the mouth being increased. We still have to sacrifice the animal and check the histopathological as well as the uh, biochemical mediators of it, whether they have reversed or not. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, you have a congratulations from Dr. Sushil. Dr. Subod is asking how long it will take to make stem cell therapy ap applicable in the clinical setting? It is a long way to go, actually. But there are, at least for some of them, like for uh, degenerative disorders like Alzheimer's, for Parkinson's and all, they have reached phase 3. For pulmonary fibrosis, they have reached phase 3. So still that FDA approval, uh, 
uh, is required i was discussing it with dr mandana if it is a stem cell based beauty product it get comes in the market much faster but when you are using stem cell as a drug then it is like a hurdle raised there are so many uh, regulatory bodies you have to uh, you have to follow you have to comply with for it to come into the market but i am looking at at least another 3 to 5 years or the next decade probably could be stem cell based uh, research decade that that is how dbt and dst is also recognized that maybe this is this would be the new wonder drug or the new miracle drug because it has tissue tropism you really just need to precondition it slightly and it would automatically go into the area which has the disease or the degenerative pattern and then it will regrow and show changes but i am looking at the 10 years i think it takes time it takes time so dr akshay he says he is currently looking for a phd topic can you highlight how better transcriptome would help in comparison to metabolomics is there any difference in practice in laboratory uh, yes the transcriptome analysis would probably be a better choice for phd topic because the transcriptome analysis would give you a detailed analysis of how it would be working and the configuration plus it would probably be able to give you a good biomarker if we could use it so uh, in laboratory settings both the procedures are entirely different and transcriptome analysis would be a better one then we have dr subot any study was done regarding stem cells from buccal fat pad so i have not mentioned it in the uh, ppt but yes we found the buccal pad fat or the adipocytes having better angiogenesis potential than any other source but since we were more concentrating on the fibrosis so i said dpmscs and uh, shed but actually buccal pad fat gives you an excellent uh, stem cell source for angiogenesis so we are doing other studies for bone regeneration and soft tissue regeneration along with grafts where we are using the stem cells from buccal pad fat okay, and we have one from hazare sir okay let's see yeah he is asking did you analyze arecanut extracts for alkaloids and ericolin yes sir yes sir uh, when we did a uh, we published it also we did an analysis of ericolin contents of ericolin ericidine as as well as polyphenols and we actually did the analysis to see how much of it is released by the ericonut extract that we have made so the ane extract that we have propagate we have used for animal model studies to bring about the animal models for osmf in that we analyze the amount of ericolin ericidine and the exact flow or the release rate from the ane extract um, but sir we have not actually you seen ericolin effect on reversal of fibrosis we have taken the whole ericonut extract and uh, and the secretome to do the analysis right so at the moment we don't have any questions so just to give everyone time in case they want to type anything i'll just make a few announcements so among uh, one of the things that i should inform everyone is that for the moment uh, probably for the next couple of months the uh, email newsletter will not be on because well our list has really grown very large but then with that very large list is coming a very large cost <laughs> so i have to work out how i can uh, support that because it's both the making of the newsletter and of course the cost of the software i mean the platform that i will be used to send uh, the emails because they have uh, recently seriously raised their charges so in that much time uh, i'll look for another possible platform but uh, you can look for our uh, events upcoming events on our website uh, all the link is given in the description of the video you can also of course find on all the platforms where we are that is on facebook on instagram on linkedin and on um twitter which of course i found the name has been i think changed to x i'm not entirely sure what happened while i was on my uh, medical uh, leave but i found that it's changed so i'll catch up with that later but basically you can find the details of our upcoming uh, events in a number of places or you can also subscribe to our whatsapp list 
that is continuing because that I can send from the phone directly. And uh, well, that is about our announcements. Let's see if there is anything else being coming up. Okay, yes, we have. Dr. Subot says, any studies are being do done abroad on stem cells? Yes, yes, sir. there are a lot of studies and there are a lot of centers that are doing on uh, stem cells. Uh, you have National University of Singapore also who are working on stem cells and uh, we have uh, we don't have too many collaborations but we have few people we have Griffith University and there are people in Australia who are working on uh, stem cells but most of it is uh, still at the phase two and phase three levels uh, okay Dr. Akshay is saying thank you of course, now we are getting a lot of thank yous for the presentation. That is, yes. Let me share all of them so you can see them. <laughs> Hazare says, says, has a comment. Yes, uh, we also failed to induce fibrosis way back in 1994 on Anacolin and guinea, pig, guinea pigs in London, lab of Professor Johnson. Okay, and uh, Dr. Subod is asking, do you know of any studies in the USA? Uh, no, sir. Personally, I don't know if anyone is working there. Mm. But I'm sure there must be because like I'm saying, it's a new steroid. So I'm sure there must be studies. I can find out and probably get back to you. Okay. I think we have uh, sort of done it all and gone through everything. So... Let's give you a certificate. The entry certificate is right here. Yes. Thank you so much. I don't know if you can see this. but <laughs> So thank you for uh, the presentation. I know it was slightly short notice. And it was very interesting work. Uh, it's, it's always great when we get a chance to share some fresh research. Because it of course gives others ideas too. And at the end, the whole purpose is, of course, to take it to clinical and to benefit patients. But very interesting work. It was really good. Thank you for sharing it. And thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Right. So, okay, now with that, we are going to end this week. We shall meet you. There are two more comments. Let me see. Okay. Uh, Yes, Dr. Subodh. So, Dr. Vinay Hazare, sir, has responded to your question by saying Dr. Praveen Arane from Buffalo University is working on the same topic in the USA. Right. So, thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for being here. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being with us. And sorry for the slight hiccup in the beginning. Like I said, it's been a long time, actually four months. So it's uh, sort of, I think I was too tense after this long gap. And uh, I do hope to keep seeing all of you regularly. Now, every Tuesday, we are back on. And uh, it will be marvelous to see you all here. Please remember that you can also watch the recording if you couldn't, or if your friends or your contacts couldn't make it to watch it live. All our videos are there available on our channel. Today, I guess, is the 76th video there. So please go and find. There are a lot of stuff there. It's for all of you. Please watch it. And uh, yes, I shall see you all next week. Uh, thank you, Dr. Supriya. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful week.